One man, one murloc, one giant angry badger. This is Blue Please. It begins now. Yes, indeed, folks, you're tuning in to Blue Please here on Wow Radio with myself, Total Biscuit. Welcome to the show. Technical problems abound. Lol, 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 and all that. Now, just one second while I turn the speakers down. No unprofessionalism here. Aha, now we go. We shall not actually have some echo back this time. At least that's the plan. Right, okay. So I've now banged mine off the desk. The mic's fallen backwards. The computer reset. As the Morlocks corrupted this week, and yeah. Everything's going really well. Uh, 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 where's a fork? I want to stab myself in the eye and then eat it. Preferably with something tasty on top. Maybe like ketchup or some kind of barbecue sauce. Maybe I can eat it with tortillas. A tasty idea. Get it? Idea? Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, God, no, no. My name's Total Biscuit. This is Blue Please. You're listening to Wild Radio and I'm annoyed. Ah, annoyed, annoyed, annoyed. Seriously. First is Blizzard trying to stop people from listening to my show, now even the god of my computer. The god of the great computers, or whoever he may be, maybe he's called, I don't know, HAL 9000. Yes, I did just say. 9000! That's never going to get old. It really isn't. Okay, maybe it will get old, but I'm going to enforce it on you anyway, because I'm a cruel, cruel person, and I have a very black and evil soul. So... I'm angry and annoyed and so forth. I have many topics to cover this this week, including the last part of the epic giveaway. Last week on Blue Please, you were given the chance to win a variety of interesting prizes, including EU collector's editions of the Burning Crusade, a couple of WoW TCG Star Decks, and a Turtle Mount, and some WoW Radio Comedy CD Limited Edition. Very nice, very nice. Uh, last week you were given three questions. Three! That is not two, but three! You must answer me these questions, three. And after that you must answer me two more questions which are coming up on this show. So, uh, listen up. You have until next week's show, of course, to answer, and the winners will be announced on next week's show. So, listen up. Do not send any answers until you have all five. If you don't send in all five, you will be disqualified, like the failure that you are. The email address for the contest is epicgiveaway at gmail.com. That is epicgiveaway at gmail.com. Yes, I did just say. <laughs> Sound bites make me funnier. Right, let's get on with it. Rant time. I've got loads of content to come up, including Nubcake News. And wrap in the forums. And again, Ask the Murloc disappeared in the twisting nether that is my hard drive. Annoyingly enough, I tried to load it up after that hard drive reset, and what happened? This file is corrupt. Damn it! This is what happens when you have something open, and then your computer goes, Neow! You just hear this spin-down sound, and you think, Oh, good lord, that hasn't happened in months. Why, why, why now? Why now? I blame Blizzard. Come entirely Blizzard. It's obviously Blizzard's fault. Everything's Blizzard's fault these days. So, rant time. Okay. Coming up in the rest of the show, we have a whole bunch of content, and it will be awesome, including... Level 60 to 70. Was it long enough? Was the content good enough? Post 70. Is the content good enough? What are you going to be doing post 70? Why? And speculations on future content in the expansion. And also, PvP. Now with the introduction of the new arenas, is it more than just a metagame? We shall see. However, rant time. And first things first. Do you know of a quote? Now becoming a rather infamous quote, and it says, But how do you kill that which has no life? Of course, they can form Make Love Not Warcraft, the South Park episode. Now, why do I say that? Why do I bring this quote out right now? The idea of World of Warcraft and its huge expansion into the public domain, and the rather backwards opinions that some people seem to have about it as a hobby and as a pastime, and even something which you can perhaps base your life around. And why not, after all? Many people base their lives around their hobbies. I mean, let's have a look at just what we're actually talking about here. Life. Let's talk about life. Everyone has one, as far as I'm aware. 
If they didn't and they're still talking to me, I'd be highly surprised and a little bit scared. I would get a fire axe and embed it into their skull and perhaps attempt to sever their head at the neck. Because apparently that is the only way to kill them. For when there is no more room in hell, the noobs will walk the earth. So, life. Life is a beautiful thing, filled with absolute complete garbage. Really. You can turn the corner and people will have it in for you, one way or the other. They may not have even met or spoken to you before ever, but they will have it in for you. They'll have preconceived notions. People preconceive notions just by looking at you. It's really quite stunning. As far as I was aware, everyone was in fact born differently. It's a crazy thought. Not only in their appearance, but in the way that they actually act. And their likes and dislikes. So, what point am I trying to make here? World of Warcraft now has over 8 million subscribers. That's a lot of subscribers. That is a very, very big multinational thing. I mean, you've always had crazes. You know, things have gone worldwide and they've been a, a, a temporary craze, if you will. And perhaps died down to relative obscurity. I would like to take as a primary example, yo-yos. Popular for a grand total of four months in the UK and then fading back into obscurity. And during that time, all these amazing stars came to the fore and said, Oh, this is the yo-yo star that we didn't know about before. He can do tricks with 50 yo-yos tied around his nose. It's amazing. He's now a celebrity. And then they disappear. And it goes back into relative obscurity. The funny thing about crazes, as compared to, say, something that is more stable, that hangs around for a lot longer, that has some degree of permanence in our world is that they're never considered to be sad as such. That they're, they're never accused of being, you know, it is the standard accusation. You're into yo-yos, whatever. You're into yo-yos uh, in the time of the yo-yo craze. You were not the kind of person that had no life. You were one of the popular, well, popular kids, and it was all understandable. It's, like, it's a craze. It's awesome. It's brilliant. I love it. I should get into this too. I want to be popular. Yeah. For about four months until it disappears into relative obscurity. Now... At no point during that does it ever is it ever really accused of being particularly sad. Oh, you get famous people adopting it, people mention it on the TV and radio, and suddenly it's a big thing. And yet you get something as large as World of Warcraft that's been going on for, what, two years? Over two years? Well, let's look at the people who play it, ranging all the way from literally five to six-year-olds all the way through to the elderly, businessmen, students, housewives... Anyone you can possibly think of. Give me a stereotype. Give me a cultural group and I will find you people that play World of Warcraft with it. And yet, World of Warcraft, even within its own community, this is, the, this is the really hilarious thing about it all. Outside of the Warcraft community, we've got people who will take one look at MMOs and they will go insane. It's like, oh my god. The evil, addictive, demon-spawned hell thing that is World of Warcraft. Taking away the lives of our children, our husbands, our girlfriends, boyfriends, mothers, fathers, cousins, former roommate. Which makes us absolutely nothing. Which is what you're about to become. Thank you, I'll be here all week. Trying to be here. Now, why, why, why is World of Warcraft considered to be sad? A waste of time. Well, in comparison to another hobby, other hobbies that could be considered admirable, perhaps the pursuit of football. Let's, let's take the pursuit of football. Uh, whether it be soccer, as in the proper football, or American football, also known as rugby for pansies in 300 pounds worth of body armor. What's the difference? What is the difference? Well, I would say the fear of technology is definitely involved in that. You've got the fear of technology. People don't really understand the way computers work. I mean, let's take an example. A few days ago, I was in, I was working in my store, and this, like, must be, must be an eight-year-old came in, and he picked up a copy of World of Warcraft off the shelf, and his father was with him. And it, we took it to the counter, and I explained to him, um, I sure you wish to purchase this. This is an online-only title that requires a subscription. And he turned around to me, at least the father turned around to me, like I just claimed to set his house on fire. Uh, like, what? Subscription for a game? What, what, what's going on there? And I explained to him, well, you know, this, this amount of servers, and I was like, oh, I don't really understand what you're talking about. So I, I went back to layman's terms. You know, I stopped talking about server clusters and 24-7 online permanence in your characters and went, well, 
There's a lot of computers over in France. And you know how you save a game on a memory card? On your PlayStation? Well, this is like the same thing. Only instead of buying a memory card, you pay $8.99 a month for the privilege of someone else doing it for you. And here's the thing, you can't finish the game. So, say you beat Grand Theft Auto in 20 hours. You can't beat World of Warcraft, it's a wonderful thing! Wonderful! Take that eight ninety nine a month and consider how many games you could crack through in that time. How many games can you complete? How many instances of Crash Bandicoot can you get through in that time for that money? And his response like, well, I don't really understand this technology thing, blah, 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 blah. So I end up selling his son Guild Wars just to spite him. But anyway, he didn't understand. Nor did he actually sound like he wanted to understand. And this was a fairly intelligent guy, by the looks of it. He looked like a fairly intelligent guy. You know, he had his briefcase. It was shiny. It was probably more expensive than absolutely everything I own put together. In fact, it was probably had more capacity than my bedroom. But yet, it's a case of, well, I don't really understand. Nor do I actually want to understand. That is kind of sad, in my opinion, because we're looking at a worldwide phenomenon. And a phenomenon isn't a craze. A phenomenon is something that explodes and that carries on going and establishes itself as a degree of permanence. It's like saying the internet at the time was a phenomenon. EverQuest was a phenomenon at the time. Because nothing had really been done like that before, and it still maintains a degree of permanence, in the same way that World of Warcraft will continue to maintain a degree of permanence for a very long time. It will get smaller, like everything always does, but it will maintain a degree of permanence. Now, why else? You know, the whole idea of... You'd have thought that after the release of, say, movies like The Lord of the Rings, and more recently, the atrociously poor, horribly derived and plagiaristic Aragon, would have pushed people back in the direction of thinking that fantasy and, you know, high fantasy, if anything, the idea of elves, dwarves, dragons, and swordplay, is an acceptable way of viewing things. It's an acceptable form of entertainment. Always has been, Tolkien being one of, of course, of our greatest authors. Whether you like Tolkien or not, you cannot deny his literary prowess. And yet, no, we're still going back to the old idea of Dungeons and Dragons in your mother's basement with five very overweight, sweaty people who can't get a job or a girlfriend. And it's funny because that's not the way it works anymore. But people would prefer to cling to this stereotype. Now, we ask ourselves why. The answer must be that people are, in fact, fundamentally stupid. And yeah, I know, this is not really news. This shouldn't be news to anybody. The idea of, for, for them, of spending that amount of time in front of a computer for something you're not getting paid for is, to them, abnormal. And World of Warcraft is a time sink. We, we know this. There is a lot of time to be spent in World of Warcraft because there's a lot to do. But then again, it's the same as spending your time with any other hobby. You've got the same people accusing others of, Ah, my God, you have no life! Uh, yes, in an Italian style. It's like, like kind of Mario accusing people of having no life. Oh, my God, you have no life! And then saying, Yeah, I just spent the last eight hours in front of the TV watching 24. Nothing wrong with 24. It's all good. Nothing wrong with watching TV at all, but... The idea of hypocrisy and being rife in our current society as regards to World of Warcraft, gaming in general. You know, we have yet more stupidity, perhaps, in Germany attempting to ban every game left, right and centre because some guys named themselves after Final Fantasy characters and went and shot up a school. We've still got Columbine in people's heads, thinking that Doom was what trained these people to kill. Sorry, if Doom was what trained these people to kill, then... I'm surprised they managed to hit anything! I mean, good lord in heaven! It's ridiculous, it really is. It's this complete lack of understanding, and even despite the fact that World of Warcraft has reached a global scale, to the fact that pretty much anyone on any given street in any major nation in the world, there's probably somebody that plays WoW. You can walk down the street and you'll pass people that play WoW. You won't know it. They look like completely normal people. That's because they are completely normal people. But this is their hobby. This is what they do in their life. And people say, well, wh why do you base... You know, can you even base your life around this video game? Like, well, of course you can. You can base your life around anything. It's simply about 
picking a goal and then choosing to pursue it instead of dossing around and doing nothing. You know what? I would rather I spent my time dedicating myself to World of Warcraft, WoW Radio, and developing my character, becoming part of an interesting community of varied and in- mostly intelligent people. There are some people who I'd like to push into a pit of fire, but that's just the way of the world. Compared to someone who dosses around doing absolutely nothing and makes nothing of their life. And what do you want to do when you grow up? I, I, want, to, I want to be on welfare. I, mean, I want to sit around and I don't know, I'll impregnate some 14-year-old and then end up with eight stupid kids. Congratulations, you win the prize of absolute fail in the world. You're listening to Blue Please here on WoW Radio with myself, Total Biscuit. I want to play a little bit of Machine Eye Supremacy. This is Through the Looking Glass, and when we come back, we'll be talking about the wonders of Arena PvP. Is it just a metagame? Or is it something more? This is Total Biscuit. This is Machine Eye Supremacy Through the Looking Glass. Enjoy. <laughs> 